Okay, so today's question name is count all triplets of the given sum in the sorted array. So the question says that a sorted array is given and we can verify that result from this array that it starts from ascending to the descending order. And a target value, we need to count the uh, triplets that is i, j, k for valid indices such so that array of i plus j plus array of k is equal to target where uh, this followed, uh, this order must be followed for the indices, right? So assuming ki, uh, you would have you would have solved this question by simply a brute force technique. Ki, what is brute force technique by the way? Brute force technique is whatever the question is saying. You need to count the triplets. Just make all the possible triplets, right? Forget about that it was given sorted and I need to follow such order or something. Um, I just I just need to find all the triplets, right? And uh, Check and, and a check condition that if that particular triplet sum is equal to the target, right? So the same way that we would have solved this question that is count sub arrays with the given ZOR and like that. So here if you see our brute force technique was that uh, mm, Where is our brute force technique? One second. Yep. So the question says count the number of sub arrays having ZOR. So uh, we went brutally we used an instead for and then uh, formed all the possible sub arrays and got the ZOR of each and every element in that sub array and we compared that if it is equal to target then answer plus plus. Similar is the case with this one as well if you we, if we need to solve the brute force uh, run a follow from i equals to less than n j equals to i plus 1 to less than n minus 1 and then k equals to j plus 1 to n minus 2. Why n minus 1 n minus 2 because uh, just as I have nested for loop, you will be going through it. Uh, you will be forming first a pair at the second for loop that's why uh, a pair can exist in the form of two 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 individuals right. And that's why you have to go for an n minus one. And similarly for triplet, you can only form one triplet at the end of two elements uh, using the two elements. So it would be n minus two. That makes sense. So, and we we're gonna not code that approach because that would be uh, meaningless for making this video. So prerequisite prerequisite for this question would be again a two pointer technique, right? So how we gonna do with two pointer technique? So we've been given this elements, right? That is minus three, uh, minus one, and what else we have? We have minus one again. Okay, what happened? Okay, I just lost my computer for, for a while, I don't know. Okay, minus one, zero, one, and two, right? So first our, let's say I pointer would be here, and this would be our range of two pointer technique that is low and high. Similarly, in the next iteration, our I pointer would be here and this would be our range of low and high for the two pointer technique. And you can clearly see that this is your I, this will be your J and this would be your K for your triplet and this will maintain this order. So this order has already been taken care by this technique. And how are we gonna do the two pointer approach here? Uh, we will just check that if array of I plus array of L and array of S, which is nothing but minus three, minus one, plus two. If it is, uh, what is the summation of these values? Minus two, minus four, minus plus two, it is minus two, right? So if it is equals, equals to target, right? Then in that case, we'll just say answer plus plus and we'll move ahead in the right direction uh, for the left monitor. And similarly for H, we'll move inwards, right? So it would be H minus minus. But if that is not the case, if your sum is greater than your target, right? So we have a sum now, which is greater than my target. Definitely, I need to decrease my sum, right? And to decrease your sum, you decide. You have two ways to move from L to L plus plus and H to H minus minus. If I move from L to L plus plus, H remains at the same position. My sum will increase because I'm moving to a higher element. So that means if I need to decrease the sum, I need to do H minus minus. And if I, in the else case where sum is lesser than target, where I need to increase my sum, I'll do a L plus plus, right? And this particular technique will solve this question. So let us code this particular approach and then we can uh, move ahead. So we are going to need some variables. First of all, let's store the array length. So len gdh. And for the two-pointer approach, we'll start a for loop from int i equals to zero. Let me expand the editor. From i equals to zero till i less than n i plus plus right and we're gonna have a two pointer technique here so let us make int low is equals to nothing but i plus one let us define our window and int h is equals to n minus one similarly let us define one one more variable int answer is equals to zero so we're gonna say while l is less than h right when we when we swap like 
if your l is greater than yours then definitely you have traversed all the elements right so while l is less than h uh, we're gonna make one variable that is int sum is equals to array of i plus array of l plus array of h right and i'm gonna check that if sum is equals equals to k so let's just uh, rename this variable as a smaller one equals equals to k then in that case uh, i'm gonna move my pointer l plus plus h minus minus an answer that we have found one potential answer if that is not the case right else if that is my sum itself has been greater than my target so i need to decrease my sum and we decide uh, if we decrease the sum that means you need to do a i minus minus and else there is one else case as well so mm, 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 in this one we need to do an l plus plus right yep that will take care of the things and here we will say our return answer that should do okay so we have for loop ke andar answer define kar diya yaar to ye local scope mein chala gaya uh hmm ise bahar karte hain taki hum ise for loop ke bahar bhi access kar sake and return answer ठीक है देर वॉज वन अगेन वन टाइप ऑफ मिस्टेक इट शुड बी लेस देन एंड नॉट ग्रेटर देन एंड ठीक है बट स्टिल माई माई आउटपुट एंड एक्सपेक्टेड आउटपुट इज नॉट मैचिंग लेट मी सी वॉट वी हैव मिस्ड लेट इज वेरीफाई इट इज माइनस थ्री जीरो एंड वन ओके सो दिस इज माइनस थ्री दिस जीरो एंड वन बी द पार्ट राइट एंड इफ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम अगेन फ्रॉम माइनस थ्री इट इज सेंग दिस वन एंड दिस वन ओके 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 सो देर आर मोर एच केसेज हियर so that means if i am at this pointer this would be my window of two pointer thing right so this minus 1 and minus 2 definitely this is equals equals to our target right and in that case what i said what we did actually we did l plus plus and h minus minus and we ignored the fact that this minus 1 could be compiled compiled with the same h value that is l plus plus and h can again give you one possible pair okay so that means if we are if we are getting an answer that is some equals equals to target then blindly we cannot do l plus plus and h minus minus we need to count that if there are let's say for this minus 1 right we, that give that gives me an answer minus 1 and this two we need to count if there are more elements such more elements and if there would be such more elements and since this is a sorted array to agar minus 1 yahan pe hai then rest of the minus 1 will also be present in this direction right so what we going to do here is that we going to do we going to count uh we going to count the element from left side and then we going to count the element from right side yes from both the sides we need to count and then only we can increment our pointers okay let me get back to the code uh, 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 so if sum is equals to equals to k we cannot blindly do this first of all let us comment this line and let me maximize the editor so if that is the case we have to count uh, element or let's say the same element from left and then we need to count same or let me just write it as vice versa for right not vice versa similarly for right right so we don't know how much elements would be present in the left in the right of l l pointer and when we don't know that how much times we need to iterate we use a for loop so again the safe condition that elements should should exist and and we are iterating just because i'm getting same value so it would be array of l it would be array of l equals equals to Uh, okay i cannot do l plus plus okay, we need to store mm, 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 mm. Uh, we need to store the elements store the left and high elements in temp and we need to make some pointers we need to make some count pointers ptr i'm writing right so i'll just say let us store that so int t1 is equals to what array of l and uh, let's make c1 and uh, again a comma 
and store the next element as well array of h and c2 is equals to zero great we're gonna do the counts on the element from list so now we can directly compare it with the our stored element that is t1 if that is the case if that is the case then what we're gonna do then we're gonna do a l plus plus right uh, let me conventionally open the brackets so it would be l plus plus and since we have found the same element so it would be c1 plus plus right similar thing we need to do for right elements so let me copy paste the same thing we'll change the pointers array of h is equals to t2 and uh, instead of h plus plus we will do an h minus minus and c2 plus plus right now we got the count of the elements of the same elements starting from left and starting from and moving from right to inwards right and from left to inwards how are we going to calculate our answer calculate answer calculate let's say final answer right let us do a bit more dry run now so in that case in that case so one of my answer was minus three minus one and two right and then I can check that uh, another one was again minus three, but the second instance of minus one and then this two, right? So I'm getting this C1 as two and I'm getting C2 as just one because there is only one instance of two. So I need to find the number of permutation and combination I can fit in this value, right? So if the values are different because here T1 was minus one and here T2 was uh, two, right? If the values are different, ha, so if the values are different here, then what is if if I say that we have a, a particular count of a, a minus one count is two, and a number two count is one, and you need to you need to place these elements here minus one and two, and how many possible arrangements you could do. So I could you, you can clearly say using the permutation formula that how many instances of minus one are there? There are two, right? And how many instances of two are there? That is one. So two star one. So I can clearly say C one star C two, right? And this would be the case if T1 is not equals to T2. What if T1 is equals equals to T2? So let us assume a case that there is three ones, right? And we need to again boil down to the same problem that there are two places, how many pairs you can form, right? So if you form all the pairs, let's say there are count, this is C1, right? C1 is equals to three. And uh, let us place three instances here. Then how many? instances are available for you to place there right so definitely jo one you have to paste here uh, the one uh, the instance of one which you have used here cannot be used at the second place so i would just say three star that is c1 cross c1 minus one and three star two and since again the same formula applying which i have applied here right so uh, but i can see key since there is a duplicacy, so we have to buy two. We can now take example. Let's say one, 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 right? So how many uh, instances can we form? So first of all, this, this one, this is the one, and then this one can be clubbed with this one. So it would be two. Now this one can be clubbed with this one, right? But then, but then again, would be overlapping with this uh, the first instance, and this one can be clubbed with this one. So there are total three instances, and the formula for again forming this pair would be the total number of elements. Minus total of elements minus one by two, which will give you three. Yep, this will work. So if the elements are same, we're gonna make we're gonna take the value of c1 into c1 minus one by two, and if it's not same, then we're gonna take c1 into c2. So uh, let us write an inline if here. In answer plus equals to if c1 is equals equals to c2. If that is the case not c1 if the elements are same right if t1 is equals equals to t2 then uh, uh we're gonna take as c1 star c1 minus one divided by total multiplication divided by t2 you could be wondering ki why you have taken c1 into c1 minus one why why not take c2 into c2 minus one so if you see closely uh we are writing this loop first right and uh, whatever the instances you will have 
let's say if the elements are same to aap you will start from left pointer and will keep on traversing to your high point right so that means your c1 would be getting the count of all the elements and uh, your c2 will again be pointing to zero because you have already reached from l to high from this first while loop and if that is the case, if that is not the case then we going to take c1 into c2 right and that is it mm, i guess yeah that is it let's compile and run okay so our output and expected output matches so that was a good question uh, actually this question is again a very standard one but it would have been much easier to code if uh, this particular thing would not have been the case agar is question ka variation hota ki you just return ki if there is a triplet existing with the target value k then would have just applied uh we would have just kept these steps all these steps right that first approach we, we just coded l plus h minus and answer pluses would have uh, done the part and that is the reason also <laughs> i blindly coded that approach but yeah every day is a new learning what else so that is it for this question and a uh, few last things so if you are someone who are willing to learn dsa from a to z and some development skills as well so as of now in uh, in our channel uh there are tons of dsa content right and recently i made a video where i launched my dsa 360 sheet so this sheet is nothing but a bunch of prerequisite question one must have in mind uh, a very simple example is ki if you do not know cadence algorithm right if you do not know cadence algorithm how you will solve the variation of it if you do not know bfs and dfs how you will solve the variation of it right so those algorithms and there are some standard questions right you should have it in your mind always right and you need to keep revising it on a time to time daily on time to time basis so that once a variation come uh, we can tackle that question and that is the point and that is the thing which i am also doing on this channel as a public learning i have made such bunch of questions i always keep on revising it and one question i practice daily and uh, i either take gfgp utd or some other pla platform for problems a day and you will be able to do so so two step process is a must and we have playlist for each and every topic now हमने सब कुछ कवर किया है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम एरेज टू लिंक लिस्ट एंड इंटरव्यू एक्सपीरियंसेस वट एवर इंटरव्यू आई हैव गिवन आई गेस इट इज 15 प्लस इन माय करियर ऑफ 2.5 इयर्स एक्सपीरियंस सो यू कैन टेक हेल्प फ्रॉम दैट या सो दैट इज इट फॉर दिस वीडियो टिल देन कीप लर्निंग कीप गोइंग टू बाय एंड टेक केयर एज लेट्स मीट अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट डे विद द नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम